This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 19th day of August in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Guyana recorded 40 new cases of COVID-19 today and two additional deaths. More on that later. But with the local economy taking a hit as the coronavirus numbers continue to climb, President Irfan Ali this evening announced a menu of measures to aid in the fight against COVID-19 while assisting the local economy at this time. That your government is not unaware of the difficulties you are facing. That is why in this holistic plan, we are not only looking at the health aspect of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we are targeting measures that would recreate jobs, ensure income goes back to the people, improve spending in the economy, whilst at the same time securing our population with good health. The president said since his government took office, it has been focusing on getting more tests completed. He said while additional tests are being done, there is still a backlog of about 700 tests to be completed. Testing has moved from a position of 40 to 60 per day to 96 to 140 per day. Notwithstanding this significant improvement, there is a backlog of 700 test results. This is as a result of the manual PCR machines currently used and also the lack of medical technologists. President Ali also announced that a recently commissioned infectious diseases hospital will now be used to isolate COVID-19 patients. It will cater for up to 150 patients at one time. In dealing with the issues of isolation, the ministry would convert the inoperable infectious disease center to an isolation facility. To this end, arrangements are being made to have a facility that caters for 150 patients requiring isolation. And on the education front, the president said $500 million will be going to the education sector immediately to prepare schools for the eventual reopening and to also cater for virtual teaching sessions. The minister has been asked to implement a comprehensive plan aimed at ensuring children and teachers remain engaged in learning. Whilst we'll make available 500 million to equip schools and provide COVID-19 support services and facilities for our children and teachers, the ultimate goal is to have our schools in a state of readiness at the earliest. And the president also announced that the Bank of Guyana and the commercial banks will be putting additional systems in place to further assist those customers with loans, allowing deferral of payments to December. The Bank of Guyana will extend the moratorium to December 2020 to allow banks to further defer customer payments to the end of December 2020 to cope with the low revenue generation needs to meet operational needs. This accommodation will result in loans not being classified as non-performing and hence will not require loan loss provisioning. The president said his government will continue to closely monitor the COVID-19 situation even as the numbers are rising in Guyana. He said it is important for all citizens to follow the COVID-19 guidelines as being prepared and put forward by the Ministry of Health. More news coming up in a moment. Spend $3,000 in fuel at Falls Gas Station between August 3rd and September 30th and get a chance to win over 100 weekly prizes or $3,000 in a recently renovated supermarket and you can win weekly prizes and one of two great food hampers in our summer promotion. At Falls, we provide a safe environment for you to shop and you can choose from a wide range of products at unbeatable prices too, along with excellent service of course. So shop now at Falls and make this a summer to remember. Hello, my name is Clyde De Haas and I am the Managing Director of Unicomer Guyana Inc. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted us all, but I promise you, we will get through it together. Shopping in this new environment could be daunting, however, 
we have fine-tuned our protocols to ensure we have a safe and comfortable environment for our staff and customers. Our store teams are observing the 6-20-100 protocol, that is 6 feet social distancing, washing hands for 20 seconds and ensuring every day their body temperatures are below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, all staff and customers are required to wear face masks when inside our stores. We are sanitizing all frequently touched areas including door handles and counters several times a day. Our service technicians and delivery team members will utilize full PPE when visiting your home. All these measures are to ensure we minimize any risks to you or to our staff. You can also shop with us via telesales or online at shopcoach.com. We are well prepared and ready to help you find the products you need in the safest way possible. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. Guyana recorded four COVID-19 related deaths today, taking a total number of deaths to 29. Today marked the deadliest day for COVID-19 in Guyana since the first case was reported back in March. In the past five days, there have now been a total of seven deaths. In a statement, the Public Health Ministry reported that around 9 o'clock this morning, a 43-year-old woman who was a patient in the transitional ward at the Georgetown Hospital passed away from the disease. The hospital explained that upon the woman's admission, a swab test was taken, and the results came back positive today after her death. And this afternoon, the second death for the day was recorded. One of the patients who was in the COVID-19 intensive care unit passed away at around 2 o'clock this afternoon. The 72-year-old man was a patient in the COVID-19 ICU for the past five days. And this evening by 6 o'clock, the Ministry of Health reported that there were two additional deaths. Those two deaths coming from Bartica, a man and a woman, ages 55 and 41. In the four cases, the health ministry said it has been in contact with relatives and other contacts of the deceased in the effort to do contact tracing and have those persons tested also. With the COVID-19 numbers rising steadily in the past days as additional tests are being done, the health ministry said citizens need to be reminded of the need to practice physical distancing and to follow all other guidelines including the wearing of face masks to prevent the possible spread of coronavirus. And the Ministry of Health this afternoon announced that 40 new COVID-19 cases were recorded today. Of those 40 new cases, 8 are from Region 1, there was one new case in Region 3, while Region 4 recorded 14 new cases. Region 7 recorded 2 new cases and Region 9 recorded 8 new cases. The total number of deaths has increased by two, as we told you earlier, and there are two persons still in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. The numbers in Region 4 are once again on the rise, with more than 45 new cases being recorded in the last four testing days in Region 4 alone. More persons are being allowed to isolate at home. The total number of persons in home isolation stands at 298, 
while the total number of persons in isolation in a medical facility stands at 68. In the past two weeks, Guyana has recorded more than 200 additional cases of the coronavirus. The owners of the Cinco Trading on Sheriff Street have been left counting their losses after an early afternoon fire gutted one of its buildings. The building housed a bond as well as a wholesale and retail department store. The fire reportedly started in the bond where supplies, including flammable products, were stored. The fire service was summoned to the scene just after 1 o'clock this afternoon as heavy black smoke was seen billowing from the building. Aided by the high afternoon winds, the fire engulfed the entire building within minutes, creating a struggle for the firemen who spent more than two hours in their efforts to control the blaze. The fire was contained to the one building, but there were damages to nearby buildings. Some persons living close by, fearing that the fire might have spread through the neighborhood, quickly emptied their homes of their belongings. At the scene, proprietor of the Cinco Trading, Frank Diabru, said the fire has now created a big setback for the company but he has promised to pick up the pieces and rebuild them. He said he is grateful that all of his employees are safe. Nobody died, so you got to accept that everybody alive, so I pick up pieces. What was told happened? I know not yet, nobody tell me. But what I know, I'll rise again. There ain't no power to keep me down. I will rise again. We ensure, and our neighbors help us, and everybody help us. So, um, we're good. But this is a setback. Of course it's a setback. The Desenco Trading Company is one of the largest importers in Guyana, with import rights for several food items, along with disinfectants, sanitizers, and other cleaning products. With several parts of the airport expansion project still to be completed, the Minister of Public Works, Juan Agil, today blasted the entire project as a troubled one. This project is also very troubled. The briefs from the project engineer, one of our young, intelligent, hardworking Guyanese, and, she's a, and, and, and it's a woman, have indicated that there is effort being made by that project engineer to get the contractor to comply with terms and conditions of the contract and to deliver what was signed on to. It's not happening. During a virtual press conference, Minister Agil complained about the quality of work he has observed at the airport and believes that Guyana is not getting its money's worth. Sadly, what was designed, signed and expected to be delivered is not what the Guyanese people are receiving. And even in the reformulated, remodeled, downsized, re renovated program as against having an airport with a new terminal building with eight passenger air bridges or with the capacity to accommodate eight aircraft at one time is not yet a reality. The Public Works Ministry believes that the previous government should have stuck to the original airport expansion plan, which would have included a new terminal building rather than just an expansion of the existing terminal. In the world of politics, the main partner in the coalition, a partnership for national unity, today defended the selection of the persons it has chosen to be members of the National Assembly. Without calling out the Justice for All Party, which is part of the APNU, the partnership said the composition of the list for the 12th Parliament represents the parties that actively participated and campaigned during the 2020 general and regional elections. The Guyana Action Party and the Working People's Alliance will be sending candidates to Parliament, along with the largest party in the group, the People's National Congress, as part of the APNU team. In a statement last evening, the Justice for All Party, headed by C.N. Sharma, complained that none of its members was chosen to be part of the APNU in Parliament, claiming that the small parties had been discarded by the PNC. But in a statement today, the APNU pointed to the inclusion of the WPA and GAP and said the statement about smaller parties being cast aside is false. 
It was explained that back in February last year, the five partners in the APNU were told that they needed to aggressively campaign for the 2020 elections. And since it would take about 7,000 votes for a seat in parliament, each of the small parties was tasked with meeting that target in votes. According to the APNU, there was no discrimination or preferential treatment meted out to any partner during the extraction process for parliament. It added that those elected to represent the coalition were required to meet the nomination criteria. And the APNU said it remains committed to bringing an end to winner-takes-all politics and one-party rule in Guyana. The government of India today announced the allocation of 1 million US dollars to support Guyana's response to COVID-19. As part of a major project which includes the government of Guyana, the UNDP and the Pan-American Health Organization in Guyana. Health Minister Dr. Frank Antony thanked the government of India for its partnership and donation to the healthcare system. Dr. Antony disclosed that Guyana will soon receive 29 ventilators as part of the donation from India. During his brief remarks, the Indian High Commissioner to Guyana said India and Guyana have always partnered for development and progress over the years. Meanwhile, the representatives for the UNDP and the PAHO WHO in Guyana thanked the government of India for their support for Guyana at this time. Across the region is coming up next. Spend $3,000 in fuel at Falls Gas Station between August 3rd and September 30th and get a chance to win over 100 weekly prizes or $3,000 in a recently renovated supermarket and you can win weekly prizes and one of two great food hampers in our summer promotion. At Falls, we provide a safe environment for you to shop and you can choose from a wide range of products at unbeatable prices too, along with excellent service of course. So shop now at Falls and make this a summer to remember. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italians, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, and East Bank, Demerara. We give thanks for real. You spend all that money on your watch. How much time you spend with your son? So much money in the club. How much you spend with the ones you love? The simple things are your blessings. Cheese, please. Remember, Tara Shiley, this is how we aim to please. The music will never ease. Cheese, please. Across the region right now, the Electoral Office of Jamaica has confirmed that persons without a voter ID card will be allowed to cast their ballot at the upcoming elections in September. But the director of elections, Glasgow Brown, said they would only be allowed to vote once their names can be found on the official voters list. He said that for persons with voter ID cards with expiry dates of 2017 and 2019, those cards will remain valid. The Electoral Office of Jamaica began the voter ID card renewal process in November of last year. And individuals who have been previously registered to vote but lost their voter ID cards are being encouraged to apply for a replacement at their constituency office for the EOJ. As it relates to new persons who were placed on the voters list published on July 31, the official advised that those cards are about ready and they should go to their constituency offices for the electoral office to pick up those new cards as Jamaica gets ready to vote.
Well, the Bahamas has shut down all public offices in its capital and has banned all international flights except for emergencies. It has also restricted hotels to essential staff only and ordered journalists to first contact the police if they need to be out on the street. They're all part of the new controls the country has started to try and control the spread of COVID-19 in New Providence. With more than 1,100 active COVID-19 cases and its healthcare system on the verge of collapse, New Providence in the Bahamas has to go under stricter measures for the next seven days, the Prime Minister has announced. He said the measures are to take effect immediately. A lockdown of the country announced on the 3rd of April was set to expire today. But the Prime Minister has announced that there are seven more days to that lockdown. And finally, tonight, international news. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has stepped up efforts to reassert his control after 10 days of street protests and strikes triggered by disputed elections. The official result gave him 80% of the vote, but the opposition has denounced the poll as fraudulent. The president says he has given orders to end the unrest in the capital. The move signaled an escalation just as EU leaders agreed to impose sanctions at a virtual summit. The president of the European Council, Charles Michel, made it clear that the EU did not recognize the result of the election and called on Mr. Lukashenko to release hundreds of protesters who have been imprisoned. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.